Welcome to episode 260 of the official Game Stitch podcast. I'm Ryan Walton. As always, I'm joined by Dan Reamer. Coming to you live from Hoth. It's a little chilly where you it's are. It's a little chilly. Yesterday it was, I sent a picture out to some different folks, uh, along with a caption that read, I can't remember, but it was like, what, minus 30 with a wind chill? Something like that. Uh, let me find. Let me find what you said here. I've still got it. It's like 30 mile an hour winds, minus 25 wind chill or something. 40 mile an hour winds, yes. negative 30 wind yes. chill. Welcome to the Black Welcome North. Welcome to the Black North. Yeah. And in the picture you sent, everything looks dead because there is nothing. Right. Well, that's the lake. That's the sky over the lake. Everything just looks dead because it's just flat earth. <laughs> it's all white. And the sky is like this. I've given up on life great. Yes, color. It's, it's Armageddon. I call that color yeah. Armageddon. It's just cold here, but the sky's still blue. Oh, yeah. The grass is that uh, tan, earthy color. Yeah. No, not here. Uh, where, here is where it's here. We have some higher being like fuck this place in particular. So, I mean, that's the price you pay for living in God's country. Uh, in somebody's country. <laughs> somebody's country. I'm also coming down off of being sick. Um, right, but so, we don't let anything stand in the no, way. Of this no, no. So if I sound a little off, that's because I am. You're sick. The I can't. The snow. Yeah, I can't feel my snow's taking over. I can't over. feel my extremities. <laughs> but still, still, you're here. But though. I'm still here. Did you ever lose power? Nope. Didn't lose any power. Never lost cable, internet, nothing. Because the fear when it's that cold is the power loss. Yeah. Well, I have gas, so that wouldn't bother. That wouldn't be as bad. Yeah. Um, still, though, you don't want to lose. power. No, you never want to lose power. I, I agree, but uh, I could stand it anyway. Right. Yeah, I don't. Power outage is one of those things where I go from zero to like a hundred on the mad scale, like immediately. I get like just straight pissed when the power goes out. <laughs> immediately. Yeah, because I'm like now I can't do anything. No, all the things I enjoy involve power too. So right, I can't watch TV. I can't play a game. I can't eat anything unless I want it fucking cold like a savage. You can have a sandwich. Fuck a sandwich. I love a good sandwich. I don't. Oh. Sandwich is like, oh, I'm too lazy to cook. I guess I'll have a sandwich. It's never like, I think I'll go craft a sandwich. Oh, not me. I go craft sandwiches. I want a fucking meal, something warm and hearty. It, I can tell. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's what I, I got to put the winter coat on. It helps me hibernate. <laughs> no, I enjoy a good sandwich, so fuck off. I mean, I'll get a sandwich sometimes when I'm out. But even then, I like a. I typically will go for like a warm. I don't want a cold sandwich. Oh, I'll, I I don't mind a cold sandwich. I don't mind a warm sandwich. I I I am a big fan of sandwiches in general. Yeah, I like a, I like a warm sandwich. Fine. But up here, we tend to have better sandwiches than down there. I will say that. It's not our thing. It's not. Yours is the warm, hearty fried food stuff that kills you at forty. We tend to do better, yeah. right? I right. But uh, we'll fry almost anything down here, and I respect that. And, and the reason I know that is because I don't remember where I went, but it was a local deli there. And uh, I asked, I, I wanted a a uh, um, uh, an Italian meatball sub. And I'm like, you have mozzarella for that, right? We've got provolone. Yeah, you're doing it wrong. Right. That is that's not right. They can't stock all the cheeses, though. You understand? But. If you're going to have an Italian sub, you have mozzarella cheese. Because our delis kind of aren't delis. Kind of? Right. No, no. They, they... I mean, I mean, they're sort of delis. <laughs> but they're not like deli delis. No, they're not deli delis at all. So that's what happens. It's a limited selection. But it's because they're serving like, you know, deep fried cinnamon rolls also. Right. Be- right. So there's got to be some give and take with that. I understand that. Yeah, they're serving that you have to cater to your market. I get it. Fun fun fact: never had a deep fried cinnamon roll. It sounded fantastic when I said it. It does sound good. 
I don't know if it's even a thing, but if it's not, it's about You can deep fry anything. If it's not a thing, it should be. It can be. You just need to make it happen. Yeah, I like to, sometimes on, uh, it's either Food Network or Cooking Channel because they're the same thing, but they have that, like, Carnival Eats, mm-hmm. and it's just fucking fried things. It's so, everything on there, I'm like, yeah, I'd try that. Deep fried cheese curds from yeah, Wisconsin. They, uh, they took something the other day, something that was, like, already good, then they dipped it in funnel cake batter and fried it, and I was like, yes, please. Well, there's some, uh, in New York City, there's actually some restaurant that, you bring in whatever you want, and they deep fry it for you. Oh, yeah, I saw that. People were bringing in cold pizza, and they were taking yeah. it dipping it straight in there and yeah. dropping it in the fryer. I would eat the shit out of that. Yeah, that's awesome. That is awesome. I like a restaurant just caters <coughs> to like the people who are like, I don't give a fuck. Yeah. I'll fry that, and they're like, sure, we'll fry it for you. And then charge you for it. When you brought it in. Yeah. They... I don't do a lot of deep frying, but deep frying... This is good. Yeah. It is. I got a, I got a new deep fryer uh, last year and it's pretty sweet because, you know, a lot of times you'll fill it up, you'll use it and then you're kind of done. Now you've got to throw the oil out, all that uh-huh. stuff. So this one actually has like a drain and it drains into like a, uh, through a filter and then into like a plastic bin. So you can reuse it. Yeah, I mean, you can't keep it forever, but, you know, if you're going to fry again next week, it's still good to go. That's cool. Because it's in an air, airtight container, and all you do is unscrew the thing and pour it right back in, and then put that container back in the bottom. It's, like, made into the machine itself. That's cool. Yeah, it's pretty nice, and uh, it's helped with, like, the back-to-back frying situation. Right. Like, if you're like, I did wings yesterday, and they're fucking great. I want to do wings again today. Like, you don't have to get more oil and... Figure it's out just, what to do with all that. Just and, reuse. Yeah, yeah. We don't. We yeah. don't. Uh, we don't fry a lot of food around here, really. Uh, my wife doesn't eat a lot of fried food. Um, and have you tried the air fryers? They're pretty good. I have not. I tell you what, I do have. I don't know if I talked about it already on this podcast. Speaking of that, mistakes were made, but I'll get to that in a second. Um, we got an Instapot, which is a pressure cooker. Oh, yeah. yeah, I got one of those. That motherfucker is genius you can okay listen to what we did in an hour and a half we made three meals out of frozen meat right which is it right up my alley and hers too because she preps she preps for for the week right so it doesn't take her all day anymore it takes her you know two hours so she's pretty happy about that but yeah if you do not have an instapot or pressure cooker of some sort i suggest you run right out now and spend your hard-earned money for one because it will change your life. I really like uh, make a lot of rice in it, but I like you know like the dirty rice and the red beans and rice and things like that come out really good. Um, <laughs> eggs, hard-boiled eggs are awesome in it. But like as far as like doing a roast or something, there I don't like how the meat comes out. No, Mm-mm. it's it's fine. I haven't done a but I haven't done a roast yet, but. Uh... It's fine, but it's never like the way it is when it comes out of a crock pot after like 10 hours. I'll tell you what I did do. Yeah. We, there's, we made good chicken out of it and good pork chops. Uh, they yeah, were good. I've had chicken and it was good. Um, yeah. I haven't tried a roast yet, but I made... Um, it's, it's odd that this is what I made, but I made Italian meatballs for Italian meatball subs. <laughs> Jeez, mozzarella? I did, of course. <laughs> and they were delicious. Yeah, the Instant Pot's a cool, a cool little thing. Um, but the air fryer is something I shit on for a long time because I'm like, you don't fry with fucking air, you fry with oil. And it's supposed to be bad for you. And there's no way it'll be as crunchy and as good. It's pretty fucking crunchy and it's pretty fucking good. But it's, Like, you can just throw whatever in there and put it on for ten minutes and when you pull it out, it's like it was fried. But it's healthy. Or healthier. Yeah, and it's, depending it, on what it's it even is. got a little, the one that that's here even has like a little basket that like the grease actually drips down, so not only does it fry without oil, it also like kind of gets some of the bullshit out. Huh. And uh, <coughs> I feel bad for everyone that I talk shit about with air fryer. It's actually kind of neat. All right. I kind of I like kitchen things. I like gadgets. I do too. I like kitchen stuff. Anything too. that might make cooking easier because I don't enjoy cooking. See, I enjoy cooking, but still, I like a game shark for the kitchen. So I'm looking for any gadget I can find that'll. 
make that a little easier. Yeah, I like it to be easier for my wife because she doesn't cook a whole lot. When she only cooks like mostly for like I said, prepping for the week, so she can have right. breakfast and lunch throughout the week. Uh, so she'll do you know three or four meals on a Sunday, but uh, it takes her all day, and if it's taking her all day to prep, that means I have to do stuff around the house to. Otherwise, she feels like things aren't getting done because she can't do it because she's cooking. Here she could just... Plus, you're like an asshole if she's in there prepping all day and you're like laying on the couch watching TV. There's that, too. There's, not, sometimes there's just like the, the appearance factor. I'm not as worried about that part, but... Like, I just need to look busy because I'll look like an asshole if... But the thing is, she'll ask me to do things. Can you can you go get the laundry? Can you? Because I'm... Because I have to... I'm, I'm making... I'm prepping. Okay. Do you ever just let out a sigh? Oh, always... Like, <sighs> yep. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'll get it. Because I'm not fucking doing anything. You're, like, you're actually not doing anything. <laughs> of course I do that. Right. And then I throw the old. You're the one prepping. It's this is all on you. Right. You, you know that have to do I'm that. not prepping. You didn't right. have to prep. <laughs> yeah. I'm that asshole. It's all good. Anyway, I spoke of mistakes earlier. Um, it was recently brought to my attention that I am getting old and senile. And can't mm-hmm. remember things because apparently, not apparently, I went back and checked and it's for real. Uh, apparently, for my Gone But Not Forgotten, I did the same game two times in a row. <laughs> Lucky for us, the Boner Squad was on the, it. The, and they point. Boner Patrol. <laughs> the Boner Patrol well, was on it. <laughs> and they let us know that we, uh, by we, I mean Dan fucked up. Yes. So I won't take any blame because I've said multiple times I don't remember anything from podcast. Yeah, to it's podcast. none of your. It's it's all on me. But uh, and you could have done the same gone but not forgotten every week since we started, and I would not have caught it yet. But I, I and here's the thing that I have a problem with most about it is uh, when I did win back the second time, it really felt like the first time I talked about it. <laughs> <laughs> what I want to do is go back because I don't think I know win back, but I'd seen win back. <coughs> What I'm interested in is to go back and listen to my two separate reactions <laughs> and see if one time I remembered it more than the other time. Because it seems like the second time I should have remembered no, it more. Right. <laughs> but I think I, I didn't that. remember it. So anyway, thank you to the Boner Patrol for that. Calling out Bonesy out Dan's there. fucked hard. Awesome. Yeah, can't remember what he did last week. Nope. Getting old. About time for the brain freeze. It's about time for me to get shipped off to the to the hospital. <laughs> Fucking glue factory. Oh, yeah, you were putting yourself in the hospital. I was killing you. Yeah, thanks for that. <laughs> I didn't know where we were going with it. And that's obvious. Right. <laughs> did you play anything this week? I did. I got wild this week. Ooh. So after last week's podcast, I was motivated, and I said, let's go Let's go do some streams for the ladies and gents. It was New Year's Day. I wanted to ring in the new year. Uh, I thought Gang Beast will be a fun game for everybody to watch, and it might have been if it worked. Didn't work. That stream now owns the crown of the shortest stream ever. Are you sure? Yeah, I think it it came in at 20 minutes, not 21 Uh, Okay, yep, yep. I think you're right. I think you were... I think it just squeaked under the shortest video ever. (laughs) Yep. But... So it is now the shortest stream ever, and it ended with a hard freeze, and I don't even... There's not even a sign out. I just quit. I'm like, well, this is done, and I just end the stream. (laughs) I didn't even give the extra after because that game didn't even deserve it. Just game over. And I, I told you this. It's actually the worst I've ever seen the game run. Yes. But there's still no excuse for it because that's when I turned it on. That's when I was streaming it, and it ran bad. Uh, we got in a match. I got my ass whipped. That was all fine. Then I tried to connect. It disconnected. Tried to get in another one. Had some issues. Then finally get in, start playing, and it it just freezes up. It says At one point, it says I win. Yeah. I saw but that. But I wasn't even fucking moving. I saw that. Like, what? nothing was happening. <laughs> but you won. So, yeah, that is uh, that came in at 20 minutes, which I think is the short. I think the the Monster Hunter I think you're right. beta is 21 minutes. I don't know that that's a fair comparison to make, though, because the Monster Hunter, the Monster Hunter World beta worked. Yeah, I mean, I would have... Obviously, if Gang Beast was working, it would have went longer. Right. It just, it was, but you just have to play with the cards you're dealt. Right. It was over. So, yeah. Because the, So the thing about people people who have never streamed on the PS4, because obviously we don't stream through a computer or our streams would be much, uh, much more fancy. 
is if you back out and start another game, it ends the stream. Yes, it does. So I would have had to end the stream anyways, and there was no point to get in there and have it happen again. Right. So I turned it off, and I was like, the hell with this. The hell with streaming, the hell with Gang Beast, the hell with all of it. Then you immediately went live again. And then 10 minutes later, I went live <laughs> um, with I Expect You to Die VR, which was great. Um, it ran perfect. It's a great VR game. And I said, I want to do a mission. I did the first mission. It's only five missions. I don't want to give anything away. I did the first mission. Just kind of showing people how it works. And then I was going to do the last mission, which I had not <coughs> attempted. Which you had not attempted? Right. And I said, I'll die in here. And you can see the point of the game is that they expect, I expect you, to you to die. It's fine. I don't die. Really? I do a flawless run first play through, <laughs> which is confusing to me because I'm like, huh? Yeah, that's, uh, that it, is not your style. And I built in time for me to die, which didn't happen. So then I decided I would go back and try to speed run the first mission that I'd already showed off. Um, talking through it, explaining how the game worked, it took me like four and a half minutes. Speed run's 35 seconds. So I'm like, this is not even doable. By the end of the stream, uh, you can see what happens. But... Uh, it's it, it's a fun game, and if you have VR, you should definitely buy it. And that stream... It brought my mood back up. Like, it, it went the way it was supposed to. The game played flawlessly. The VR in that game worked so good. And uh, I was really happy with it. So happy that when I finished, I'm like, maybe I should stream another game. Maybe I should stream one more. And then I was like, that three in a day might be too many. Yeah. It's- so I jumped in, and I played without the stream being on by myself, and I played Star Trek Bridge Crew, also PSVR. Mm-hmm. And I was super impressed with this game. <clears throat> Which blows my mind because you don't strike me. Well, I know you're not a Star Trek guy. Um, but you yeah, like I'm a VR guy, game. though. You are a VR guy. And it's Ubisoft, so you know, I played Eagle's Flight. It worked well. I know that they have put resources in. It's cross-platform play, so you're synced up with the people playing on the Rift, the people playing on Vive. And you jump in, and you're kind of in this... So when you jump in training, you're kind of in this... It's kind of like the bridge, but it's like a training room. So it's a big open room. I'm like, this is not as cool as I thought it would be. It's walking you through each position. You're like, eh, it's all right. Then I jumped in the, they've added a single player campaign to it. Uh-huh. Um, so I jumped in that. They also have a voice control powered by Watson, which I thought was weird. Um, Cause I don't know that Watson's made its way into the video game before now. <laughs> but anyways, I jumped in there in a single player and then it actually puts you in a real bridge, like with people all around you. And it's all the way, um, like you could turn all the way around. Everything is there, and everything is real, and there people are doing their things and punching buttons and stuff. And you're like, "This is fucking cool." I played as the captain. You can take over any position you want, or you can choose to play one of the other roles. Uh, I was captain, giving orders out to everybody, and it gets fucking intense when some shits happen. Yeah, <laughs> because I'm like, we got to repair systems. They're like, cool, we repair systems. We got to drain power from our. Our shield, I'm like, can't fucking get shot right now. Stuff's on fire. People are like, what's happening? It's pretty good, and you have to kind of really balance your resources and what you want to do. So are you a good captain, we, or are you a shit captain? I'm a pretty good captain, um, but it, it, it gives you choices where you have to, like, do you do what's morally right and break some rules, or do you follow the rules and let what happens happen? So, like, there's some choices like that. So what'd you do? I broke the rules and did what was right. Morally right. That's right. Hold but, on. You yeah. always hold on to your principles. Yeah, there were some people stuck in space, and I went and saved them, and I had to go through a Klingon area I wasn't supposed to be in, but it is what it is. Uh, and, of course, they had ships that were cloaked, and they started attacking me because I broke the treaty, but it is what it is. I fucking blew them up, and I saved those people. That's right. Because that's what a good captain does. That's what good guys do. That's right. And you're a good that's guy. I can't worry about rules. Yeah. But it, it's really neat. Uh, the engineer role is tough because you assign power for everyone. So, you know, I'm searching a ship. I've got shields up. I need more power. Well, I'm getting warps prepared, so I need the power. And it's really a balance, a give and take. That's a tough role there um, if you're playing that one. Some of the other ones are, are kind of simple. Uh, the VR works, uh, again, flawlessly in that game. Super, super good. That's cool. All you're doing is... So when you when you pull the trigger on the you can play with the controller but that's a new way to do it but when you're playing with the the move controllers when you pull the trigger your hand is flat out instead of anything else and when you pull the trigger it just it does it taps the index finger 
Ah. Uh. So when you're down there and pull the trigger, it taps whatever your finger's over, and it looks super legit. And if you pull the trigger up anywhere on the, you know, away from the control panel, it just makes a fist. So that it's not tapping air. Right. And it works super good, and the captain's chair has got all these little buttons that you can tap, and shit's popping up everywhere, and you, you take incoming calls from people, and you can actually, there's a button to zoom out and see the ship from, like, space. And the stuff that it's around it, and it, it works really good, and it made me want to play it more. And I don't care about the story or the universe, right, or, or any of that. Like the game was fun, good, and you can play it with other people too. If you have friends that have it, you can make up the whole crew. Ah, that'd uh, be neat. Yeah, online you jump in with you know five people, and everybody's doing you know you know your role. Four people, I think. No, you know your role. Yeah. And so then it's different in that you're not like, you know, right now I can call out orders to everybody right then. I'm like, hey, do this and you do that. And, you know, as the captain, you're actually like captain in it. Right. So I really enjoyed that. And when I finished, I did a 35 minute mission and I went through the training. I wish I had streamed it out. I was disappointed that I didn't because I think it would have been a, a fun one to see. Hmm. So well, you can always do your next mission. Yeah, I can. But then you don't get the learning curve. That's true. Then I saw like a fucking pro. That's true. Oh, now you're a pro? Yeah, Got I just it. come in and look like I've been captain okay. in for years. Got it. So Got it. I played that, and then, of course, the usual suspects. But, yeah, it was. I didn't play as much this week. I've been kind of tired. And it's so cold here that after being out in it for three or four hours a day for work, I'm like, meh, I'm pretty well just ready to crank the heat and fall asleep yeah what's nice though is that you you it takes you like three hours to decide if you're gonna be on so you just turn your ps4 on and while you're making that decision so so in fairness i was in netflix watching the toys that made us because That's i good. was on episode four i was on episode four and i fell asleep episode four is the last one right it is so actually i think it's i think it's an eight part so there'll be a season two yeah um Right now, it's the last part, and I fell asleep, and I woke up at the end, and I went. So, I, that wasn't fair to the series, which is fantastic. And if you have Netflix and haven't watched it, you should. Yeah, I started watching you're like it. like an 80s kid. So, I went back and finished episode four. Gotcha. It was good. Yeah, really 60s, 70s, 80s, maybe even early 90s. You should be able to appreciate the series. Yeah, so, so far, it's good. I've only started watching the first episode. Yeah, first one's good. Um, that's the Star Wars one, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Star Wars, Barbie, G.I. Joe, He Man. Yep. And Masters of the Universe. You know, you want to include everybody, and not just He Man. Right. It's not just He Man. It's He Man and the Masters of the Universe. Yeah. They're just they're informative, but it's also like part of it. If it had no like no narration, just seeing the characters and stuff again, seeing the toys mm -hmm. would be enough. Ooh, I had that. But it's, <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's what I did. I'm like, I'm like, hell yeah. Yep. And I, I hope that in the next one they do Hot Wheels because that's really, Hot Wheels and Ninja Turtles, if they could do those two things, that was really my youth. So I'm hoping, I can't believe that Hot Wheels won't make it. But... I could see Ninja Turtles not making. I could see Ninja Turtles not making it. Um, the thing about Hot Wheels is they're literally cars. That's I mean, they're, yeah. there's not a lot of diversification other than yeah, the I'm, colors. I'm you know? sure there's a sketchy story somewhere about how they almost didn't happen, though. Oh, probably because it seems that all these toys have a sketchy past where they almost didn't. Happen. Yeah, yeah. Like, Kenner landed Star Wars out of dumb fucking luck. Yes, they did. Like, those stories exist probably for everything. Um, the only concern I have is that Episode 2, Barbie, really extensively covers Mattel. And I'm like, hmm. Don't know if we can do two, three, four Mattel toys. Or if we've got to move on, so. Gotcha. You know. But when you're talking big players back then, you don't have a lot. You've got Hasbro, you've got Mattel... You've got Kenner. Kenner. You know, there's not That's, not a whole lot of options. It. Really? So. And then you had your, you know, your Lego Hot Wheels. That I, I got to think Lego will be one, but those Lego documentaries have been done and done and done. Transformers has to be one. Transformers has got to be one. I'm, I'm positive Transformers will be one. And I'm sure it almost didn't get made. 
Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure the toy line almost didn't get made. Yep. Toys that made us uh, Netflix four parts. They're like an hour each, so they're 45 minutes or something like that. Uh, really good. Yeah. Really. Fun. I've just started watching the first one. I'm going to continue watching that. They're best consumed if you can watch it all at once, but I couldn't do part four that way. So. Oh, well. Because I fell asleep. Right. took a nap. You know, took a little nap in the middle of it. You took a nap? In the middle of it, I mean, 15 minutes in and woke up at the end. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, why does my head hurt so bad? Uh, when did this end? Uh, uh, so that like that's all you did all you played this week yeah 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 a lot of vr a lot of vr um i don't know if i spoke about it last week but i finished wolfenstein 2 great game go see it or go go play it or see it either or one. see it or watch a video on it it was awesome um and then i finally finished episode uh three of life is strange before the storm and that's some that that that's some deep shit, man. That shit is deep, gives you all the feels. I believe I tweeted something along the lines of being in the corner, curled up weeping. Um, it's heartbreaking. It's a heartbreaking game. A great game, but it's really gonna it's really gonna touch you right in the cockles of your heart. Right. Um, especially that last choice you have to make. Um what else did I play? Oh, I win back. Don't forget win back. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, fuck off. Ooh, son angry. of a bitch. Um, <laughs> I don't do that to you. I, when you fuck up, I, I, I don't make mistakes. Okay. All right. I'm, I'm mistake free. The boner patrols not found anything. Um, I just can't remember. I made the mistake, so it's fine. I'm like, I'm like some like super old grandfather who just, just floats through life. Oh, I, sh- um, I streamed a. I finally played the Long Dark, and I streamed it by Hinterland. It's been one I, I think I talked about it back when it was being developed years years ago, and uh, when I was writing the Indie Spotlight. Uh, you picked it up on the winter sale. I picked it up on the winter holiday. sale. They call it holiday, holiday sale. sale. Like, holiday sale. Week four. I also picked up Coffin Dodgers. Um, did you cart racer? It's cart racer. Yeah. Did you play that yet? I have not. I don't have anyone to play it with. Oh, was it one of those? No. There was a single player, but I'm waiting. But is it only fun if you have someone to play with? I don't know. I haven't played it yet. That's what I just said. I mean, what are you waiting for? I'm waiting for you guys to get it so we can play. Oh, well, you didn't even tell me to get it. I did. I, when we were playing Rocket League you just the other said night. I, you said I got it. You didn't say, hey, I go scoop it up. I told you you needed to get it. It's like $3.50. I don't, I don't think those words were said. I don't Because I typically will just pull the trigger on anything anyone says I should get. I care. Boner Patrol is calling you out. Win back. Win back. Picked up Win back on the <laughs> PS2. I don't know if you know this or not, but it's got an active cover system. That's right. Is that what it had? I don't even remember what it had. I've listened to it twice now. <laughs> it's, yes, that's, that's actually the active cover okay. system. is pretty close. Yeah. See, what happens is we took the uh, school approach that if you just hear it enough, you remember without even realizing that you did. And I don't know what's more remarkable, the fact that you spoke about it twice and didn't remember, or that I listened to you speak about it twice and, and didn't, didn't remember. remember. But, uh, yeah, The Long Dark is everything I wanted it to be and wanted it to be and more. I wasn't sure that I was going to like it because it's very much resource management and uh, survival. But it's fucking cool. Um, Check out. Your stream of that on youtube.com forward slash game stitch. Also, Gang Beast, if you want to see me be frustrated and I expect you to die in VR. It's three streams up already for January. And I've been cold and sick, so I also have. That's all I played. You did try to play one night, though. I did try to play one night. And I'd already given up on life. Yeah, that was. Was that Friday night? Mm, yeah, I think so. Yeah. That's when I streamed. Yeah, because I was still playing The Long Dark after I streamed. Well, see, I thought I would still... I thought that I would play, but I was finishing up that last episode, and then, you know, I get a little tired, and, you know, I was under a blanket, kind of warm. The air is still crisp. It's crisp, all right. And I was like, you know what? I think I'm just going to go on and lay it down. So... I was at least nice enough not to fall asleep, and I texted you and said, not, not going to make it. You did, yes. Unlike Howard, who's also been sick, 
And I said, are you playing tonight? And he said, I don't know. I've been sick. I said, well, I'll be on. And then he texted me last night and said, I'm on. I'm like, cool. I'm going to bed. <laughs> and he said, I thought you were going to be on. And I just went to sleep. I didn't even see it till this morning that he said that. So I did kind of feel like a dick about that. But, you know, sometimes you get tired. Yeah. No, I get it. You know, there's nothing you can do about it. I think we played Rocket League one time this week. Yes, we did. And I think I played twice. So pretty light week for Rocket League. Just too tired. We did well when we played, though. Did we? Yeah. You being sarcastic? I can't remember. No, we were winning. Okay. I mean, I'm hoping that, you know, PlayStation sent out that thing last year that talks about the hours played. Yeah, because remember that we won, that one game we were like 14 to nothing, remember? No, you know, I don't. But I hope that they send that out again because I want to see how many hours I played different things. I, I'm interested to see what my number two game is. You know I don't. Yeah. I can't remember anything. Sometimes I think it's like an actual issue. Like, I, medically, I should go see You probably should my, if you don't remember anything. My short-term memory is shit. Uh, pretty much with everything. Like, it's not one specific thing I can't remember. It's everything short-term I can't remember. Like, uh, uh, isn't that a movie? Probably. Where the dude has to tattoo everything on his body that happens because he's trying to figure out who... I mean, it's not that bad. It's like I remember, like I remember we played, Memento, but I don't remember specifics it. of of us playing. Memento, that's the name of the movie. Yeah, I haven't seen it. I remember that we played though. We did play. We did well. But I don't, I don't remember what happened. We did well. I don't know if it's a product of how much Rocket League I play. Like I, you know, you be playing a hundred matches a week. You don't remember, right? You know, you're dragging ass up and down the pitch all the time. It's hard to remember what how bad you beat fools. So I just can't remember. Pitch for those that don't know, that's the field. That's the field. The pitch. But, but pros yeah, professionals like us, we call it the pitch. Same thing for soccer or football. Yep. That's the by football I mean not the American football. No. Because that's a fucking field. Because American football is, is what you call American football. Football. It's what they call American football. We call it American. We just call it football. Yeah. Anyone outside of the America <laughs> In Canada, I'll say Canada, anywhere outside of like the North America, eh, no, that's not fair. Anyone outside of probably the United U- States and Canada would call it football, but everywhere else, because they have the Canadian Football League. Yes, they do. But anyone outside of that definitely calls it American football. Yes. Because they were already calling soccer football before we called football football. Right. I don't know why football got, why American football got called American football. I don't either. Because it makes no sense. You're not hitting the ball with your foot. Soccer, I, soccer, I understand because it's pretty much all feet. But like throwing, running ball in pads didn't didn't have a ring to it. <laughs> True. Right. Yeah, you could have called so, it something cool though, like Smash Ball. Yeah, that sounds a little too like '80s though. <laughs> Let's play Smash Ball. It does sound a little '80s. Smash Ball sounds fun. I picked up Super Smash. Box Arena. It's not super. I think it's Smashbox Arena for VR. And I'll tell you why. I started the video. No, I started the video to see if I needed to buy it. And it's like, if you love dodgeball, this is the game for you. And I'm like, well, we're we're good. I'll just back out and purchase this because I do love dodgeball. <laughs> but I think you're like, it's like dodgeball in the sense that you're they're balls that bounce around, but you shoot them out of this like vacuum type gun that sucks them up. Oh, interesting. So it's a different twist on it. Probably be one that I. Uh, stream if it's not total shit. Unless it's too much like uh, Rec Room. If it's too much like that, oh, I mean, yeah. I'm not. Yeah. It's kind of got that vibe to it. But I think it was like two bucks on... <coughs> the, they put the VR games on the the right kind of sale. Like, they they drop them pretty cheap, and I think it's worth taking taking a a chance on one. And then they also gave away Star Blood Arena, so I'll be playing some of that, too. But again, if it sucks, I'm not going to stream it. That's fair. Yeah, you shouldn't. I don't like to stream shit. No, I get it. We're about quality around here. I don't like to watch shit that's streamed. I mean, if you want to watch, youtube.com forward slash game stitch. We'd love for you to watch it live. If not, we archive everything. Yes. But if we're communicating with people, remember, we did it live. Also, shout out to Garrett, who all make, makes an attempt to come into every stream. Yes, he does. And even if it's just to say hi. So that's freaking awesome. 
This is the official Game Stitch Podcast. This is your first time joining us. We don't always talk about food and the same game and the Winter Wonderland, but sometimes we do. And win back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. we don't always talk about the same game, but sometimes we do. We're human, okay? Podcast's not perfect. We don't have a team of people around us. We obviously need like, one. This is the peanut butter and the jelly. I guess it's it. It's the whole Sammy. And uh, sometimes we make mistakes, and uh, we, you guys can point it out and be part of the Boner Patrol. Or or not, either way. That also doesn't make sense to you if you're new to the show, but go back to like two weeks ago and that'll we'll clear that up for you too. I don't want to tell people. I just want them to be confused by it. Okay. <laughs> That's fair. Anyways, it posts every Monday, six AM Central Standard Time on podcast services around the world, iTunes, uh or the podcast app on Apple, you can find us. We're on Android, the Google Play Music, which is a dumb name. Uh, we're on TuneIn, iHeart, Spreaker, SoundCloud. If you can't find us, you're not trying very hard. We are everywhere. Uh, the podcast is free. It'll always be free. But if you want to support us, you can head over to patreon.com forward slash game stitch. And we've got some rewards over there, some goals over there. And I think we're working on some things that, that may have some perks for patrons. Also, also, if you give at least a dollar, you get access to the newsletter where you get behind the scenes looks at, at the things that we do. And the happenings and going ons over here at Game Stitch. So and we do have some Patreon. We do have some some shits rolling. So yeah, there's some shenanigans happening right now. Uh, so GameStitch.com forward slash that's not right. Patreon.com forward slash Game Stitch. That'll get you there. That will That'll get you it. there. Let's dive right in head first, feet first. How do you dive? You dive head first. Head first. What do you call it when you jump feet first? Jumping Reverse into the water. Dive. That I have a name for that since they gave a name for head first. You, no, you don't. It's assumed that you're going feet first unless you're diving. Yes. So you don't doesn't need a name because it's the standard. And if you fuck up either of those, you belly flop or whatever. The belly flop, the classic belly flop, or the back flop, which doesn't have a name. <laughs> the back flop. I've never heard anyone say you back flop. They say you belly flop even when you hit your back. Well, because because you don't see very many people back flip back flop. <laughs> I've seen it before. I think I might have been a part of it before. Uh, I've seen it before too. It it's mostly happens. Um, and God, those people who jump off cliffs into the water, the kids and well, stuff that is a thing. Yeah, well, what happens? They're, they're trying to go. F- yeah, they're trying to go feet first, but they're, they don't account. For, yeah, for. Uh, f- it's a the triple large force or whatever. Right. <laughs> and it starts to pull them back and they just they land like they're laying down and you can hear the smack from across the the quarry or wherever you're at and you know it hurts and they get out and their back is solid red. Yeah. The belly flop though more amusing. It is more amusing and I feel like it hurts more. Because when you're when you're belly flopping your arms are also like flailing about because you realize you're about to belly flop. <laughs> And somehow you think you can push yourself in the air back up to a normal stance. Never happens. If you're belly flopping, your best bet is to try to commit to a dive. Yes, at that point. It's not to get back to your feet. Also, if you don't cross your feet or keep them straight, that could be painful. (laughs) That can hurt. Right. There's a lot of rules of engagement when you're diving off of something in the water. See, you're not diving unless you're going head first when you're jumping off of something. Right. See, there you go. You're getting it. I don't like it. I want a name for the standard position. <laughs> it's just called jumping in the water. There, There isn't one. Let's jump into the headlines. Let's talk a little bit about PUBG. A little bit. Jesus Christ. So we've known, we've everyone has known, eventually <coughs> PUBG will come to PS4. It'll happen. Mm-hmm. Uh, Microsoft is throwing money at them, keeping it exclusive. Sounds like right now it's a good thing that it is on one platform because they need to get it running good before it starts jumping out onto more consoles. But they have finally cleared it up for everyone, and and basically, I'm not going to read you this whole story because it's too long, but the uh, CEO of PUBG, developer PUBG Corp, came out and said in an interview that PUBG one day will be available on every platform. Not only that, but he also spoke to the aim that PUBG will to become a universal media franchise that could extend beyond games to TV and movies. Might be a bit much. Yeah, I don't. I don't know that there's enough there to do that. Also, every platform you're gonna run this thing on the Switch. You can't even get it running on the Xbox One X. Right. You're gonna run this on the Switch, or when you say every platform, are you just ignoring the fact that Nintendo is f- skull fucking every other which, console that's out right now? Which we'll get to. <laughs> right. So I mean, which is it? 
Which is it, PUBG Corp? Yeah, I don't know. This, I feel like everything these days tries to be this multimedia franchise thing, and I don't think that's necessary. Uh, particularly with PUBG, I don't think it's plausible. You'd, I don't think there's enough there to do that. You know, how are you under TVs and movies? It's already been done. You literally took the name of your genre of game from the movie. There's a movie right. called Battle Royale. Right. So he goes on to say, we want to take part in diverse industries, including esports, movies, dramas, cartoons, animation, and more. In fact, we received a couple of love calls from a number of developers in Hollywood and Netflix. What does that mean? What's a couple of, uh, number of, what's love calls? I don't know what love calls are. I, you think that's a typo in the story, or I, you think that's something I don't know about? I don't know. My love calls are probably different than his. <laughs> that's all I know. Um, esports could work. A movie, like yeah. you said, it's kind of been done, so we're just going to rehash it. Drama? Drama? I don't know what that even means. Uh, yeah, I'm guessing... TV is what it's supposed to mean. Cartoons? Which... Animation. Those aren't very different. They're not. <laughs> They're kind of the same. Unless by yeah. animation, he's talking anime. Could be. Because that is different. Yes, I... I think it's anime. It's, it's not. Anime. I don't think it is. PUBG anime could work. It could. PUBG cartoon on Sunday morning for the kids. Yeah. When you're ripping arms and shooting yeah. people in the face. Yeah. Be good. That could go. You run that right after Paw Patrol. Yeah. Or, or uh, Thomas the, the Tank Engine. Yeah. Thomas the Train for those that grew up back in the day. Or uh, or maybe it's Thomas the Train now and it was Thomas the Tank Engine. I, I don't yeah, know. One of those changed. Also, what's the other one? that Peppa, Peppa Pig. I don't know. I don't watch cartoons. I think that's a little kid's show. Paw Patrol is the jam. I see it everywhere. I do, too. My uh, two-year-old nephew loves it. Got a bunch of Christmas yeah. stuff, Paw Patrol. Yeah. It could be the next Paw Patrol. I don't know anything about it. PUBG. I don't... I would, someone was explaining to me that this is you know, Spot the Firefighter Dog. and I, I, So I believe that the animals... the hold the position of emergency responders. Yes, that is that is true. Uh, I think mean, that's the premise behind Paw Patrol. Yes. Um, so, I'd love to see a, like a Paw Patrol live PD spinoff. But here's what I don't understand is they, they don't have like like Lucky, the, the 911 receptionist. Um, the 911. There's no dispatch? There's no dispatch. No, there's a dispatcher, but there's no 911 operator. So, uh, how are all these problems coming in how does anybody know about these problems for the pop patrol you, to go take care of have you seen a show i have not i my, i have a question someone could clear up for us are they saving animals or humans Ooh, i don't know yeah i wonder if they're animals saving other animals or if they're saving humans because that's weird i would imagine they're working in conjunction with the child to could be save other children and animals I would, there's, there's probably got to be a child there somewhere. I don't know anything about it. Are they all dogs, or is there cats involved? Um, I feel like there's a cat, but I can't remember. We're, we're not well read on the Paw Patrol lore. No, I'll tell you what. I don't el- know Paw Patrol can. <laughs> I'll tell you what else is weird, and apparently it was all the rage for this Christmas. My niece got one these these Hatchimal things. Yeah, Hatchimals are hot. Um, yeah, I I don't get those at all. Is it an egg that you, like, break that has a stuffed animal in it? No, it is an egg. Yeah, Well, yes, but you have to wait for it to hatch. Oh, you don't just take a hammer to it? No. You, like, do the where you wait for it to hatch, and then... That's kind of cool. And then it hatches, and then you have a stuffed animal. And these things were going for, like, $180. But it is a stuffed animal, right? It, yeah. That's kind of cool, though, that you're excited, the anticipation... It's weird to me, but I guess honestly, it's probably no weirder than a Cabbage Patch Kid was back in 1984 or whatever. Or that all my friends packed around Tamagotchis. Yeah, fair enough. I gotta clean up this steaming pile of shit that it just left on the screen, so it doesn't become unhappy with me. <laughs> just like a real baby. And then it would die, and that was like a life lesson for you. Yeah, 
I but guess. unlike real life, you just tap that reset button with a paper clip and start it over. I didn't. I didn't play the, the Tamagotchi. That was. I had that, and I had the Digimon one that you connected with someone else, and you would fight. Ah. Uh, and that bitch was legit. The closest I ever had to Digimon was the. Uh, the. Things for the Dreamcast. <laughs> the the. Oh yeah, the VMUs. <laughs> yes. Yeah, a hot a hot item, hot VMU action. Hot VMU nights. <laughs> the closest I ever came to that. So, the moral of that story is that PUBG's taken over the world, apparently, in according their, in, to in uh, their, PUBG Corp. In, yeah, in their head, anyway. Also, if we're being clear, PUBG Corp sounds like the kind of place that does take over the world. It, yeah. Especially if you don't know what they do. I, I suppose, yeah, I can... Yeah, I instead can. of making Netflix, though, they could probably make the game run better on Xbox. Yeah, PUBG. Instead of making a Netflix Netflix movie, they could probably make it run better. PUBG Corp. Yeah, that does sound a little sketchy. Um, a little sus. Stra- yeah. stra- straight out of RoboCop. I think that I think this announcement was just to shut everybody up because people kept being like, <laughs> "When's it? When's it coming to PS4? When's it, When's the PS4 version happen?" Yeah. So they could finally just say, "Look, it's going to happen." But calm down. And we got a lot going on here, guys. Yeah, yeah, we're talking we're talking a lot of money on the table right now. And Microsoft's, you know, making it rain, trying to keep it locked up for as long as they can. Yeah. But but at the end of the day, the facts are the facts. It doesn't run well on Xbox. Right. PlayStation and and tread lightly here because I know what everybody's gonna say, does not have a preview early access program. Though I understand that Fortnite says early access. My understanding is that when people say they don't have an early access program, it has to do with like there is a minimum expectation for crashes and things like that on PlayStation that Xbox does not happen with their preview program. Right. So it can crash over and over and over on a preview program and be fine. That's how Arc did it whenever it came to Xbox first. It was part of the preview program. Even though Fortnite is early access, I think we can all agree that that game does not crash. That game runs fucking great. And they update it every fucking day. Yeah, it's always updating. So the the difference in that even if you're early access, I'll put air quotes on that, on on PlayStation, you have got to meet some minimum expectations, which I'm okay with. It's not the fucking Steam store. We'll just throw anything up. Right. I do like my shit to work. But I'm also okay with a program that is designated as such. It's a preview program. If you buy it and it's not working great, that's on you. Right. It was a preview program. It's not supposed to be. So, I'm, I'm okay with it both ways. But, you know, PUBG taking over the world. And they're going to be a part of story number two. Yes. <laughs> this fucking story. You ever this heard guy. of a game called Lawbreakers? <laughs> this guy. <laughs> Cl- a Cliffy B. Joint. <laughs> I've, I've heard of Lawbreakers. Um, well, you're about the only one that has, apparently. Uh. <laughs> and I bet this whole time you've been wondering why Lawbreakers failed. <laughs> no, no. I, Actually, I haven't. Well, I'll tell you who has been but wondering. I, but I, <laughs> I, I did come to a different conclusion than this guy, though. <laughs> uh, next on, that's who's been wonder why wondering why Lawbreakers failed because they are the publisher of Lawbreakers, and they finally got their answer according to their financial exec, PUBG. <laughs> it's PUBG's fault because it came out the same time. Yeah, because they made a game people like more, so clearly it's their fault. Um, they did some, uh, they broke down some, they dropped some hot numbers in this article, too. Oh, yeah. When, last month when PUBG had 3 million people <laughs> playing, concurrent players of PUBG on Steam, Lawbreakers came in with 90. <laughs> Although, to be 90. fair, to be fair, it, uh... Since its launch in June 17, it has uh, it has peaked at 7,482. <laughs> and let's be clear, that, that happened, I think, during the open beta, <laughs> when the game was free. It's not a free game. It's like $39. Right. It's been a rough road for Lawbreakers. <laughs> I did see a Cliffy B interview somewhere where he said, like, we're not giving up on it. We want to make it what people want it to be. But you can uh, pick the phone up and call Evolve because when you get down to 90 people playing, it's tough to bounce back even when you give that thing yeah. away. Here's the problem, um, Cliffy. Uh, and, Preach. And Talk to this <laughs> fucking Lawbreakers guy. Or the fucking Nexon guy. Nexcorp, whatever the fuck it is. Yeah, uh, fucking Nexcorp. And, this is, and Corp. this is for him too. 
Uh, the problem wasn't PUBG, but uh, they already have a game that Cliffy B supposedly is turning this into, and that's called Overwatch. Um, it's just a clone. Never heard of it. <laughs> there was already what? What else was out? Paladins was out. Also, while we're, while we're on the hot PUBG talk, Paladins has added their <laughs> Battle Royale yes, mode for everyone interested. And they um, literally call it Battleground, don't they? I don't know. It, it does have some things that are different. I can't remember what they are because I didn't care when I was listening to... Uh, it, it actually is doing some things different. I was just like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> right. I don't really even... I'll just be honest with you. I don't really know what the fuck Paladins is. I, 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 it's, yeah. Is it a MOBA? I think it's a MOBA. I think it's a MOBA. Um, yeah. It's free. It is free. And, like, they always give, like, PlayStation Plus exclusives for it. They do. And I download them, and I don't even know what Paladins is. Maybe we should jump in and play some Paladins Battle Royale. Maybe we should try it. Maybe we should stream out that. Okay. It might be fun, yeah. I think it's first person. That's fine. We'll play it. Okay. Okay, well, we'll, we'll plan on doing that. But, um, yeah. yeah, this is... Uh, Look, you made a bad game, okay? Just say, look, we're going to try to make it better. Don't be finding excuses, even, especially excuses that have nothing to do with anything. Um, yeah, PUBG is not the reason this game failed. No, at all. It's just an excuse to not take blame for making a bad game. You know, people that played Lawbreaker said it was fun. I just, no, I it's don't, not special. No, there was nothing special about it. That, it's so many good games comes out now come out now that you can't afford to not be special. Right. The only thing this game had going for it is that Cliffy B's name was attached. Bosky's first game too. That right. And that is <laughs> way to way to go. That, <laughs> that <laughs> how, so how long how much is his name worth? Not as much anymore, obviously. Right. I, um, mean, I think I, he waited too long in between his, you know, rise to, to glory. I think he I like Cliffy waited. Cliffy B a lot. I do too. I think he's like a, his interviews, the way he speaks about the industry. Like I think he's yeah, a straight up guy. I, I think he's straight up, and I think he's intelligent and smart. Uh, I don't think he's got a lot of bend in him when it comes to his ideas. Yeah, uh, I would agree that he's probably. This is how I see it. Yep, yeah, and this is how we're gonna do it. Um, I watched the, the the CG trailer that they had for Lawbreakers. I'm like, that looks cool. It looks cool. That trailer looks cool. The gameplay itself does not. And I never even checked it out because I didn't even care. It but. just looks like more of more of more of what's already out there that I'm not interested in anyway. That game was going to be free, then they decided to charge for it, especially when yep. you're looking at uh, what was that hot mess that Jaffe made? Uh, drawn to drawn death. to death. Yeah. Yeah, they saw how well that model worked and decided to charge for Lawbreakers. Uh, it turns out it's nothing to do with the model, it's the game. Yeah. the Warframe makes millions of dollars and it's a free-to-play shooter. Yeah, and it's also a free-to-play shooter that has been out on PS4 since launch. So what's that, five years? Yeah, they've worked on it. And I, I'll and be it, honest. Yeah, it sucked when it first came out. Yeah, we. I think I tried it and quit because I couldn't figure so, out what was going on. So did I. I... I watched someone play Warframe the other day, and I was like, fuck, this looks good. Yes, it does look good. It looks, they have co constantly been working on it. It's constantly been free. You, It is not pay to win. But That game looks incredible. And it, lo it looks phenomenal, doesn't it? It does. Yeah, for a free-to-play game, like that thing was doing some work. I can tell you what looks better than Lawbreakers. So, it's not the business model. It's, it's the ideas. They're not special. They're not unique enough. And... It's okay. Like like you said, Cliffy B ought to step out and say, look, I think we made a great game. I stand behind the game we made. If it's not what people want, then let's get it there. Right. Or let's fucking stop. Let's let the 90 people who are playing it play it for the next year, shut the servers down, and we'll go make something people do want. But don't try to use a game that is popular as a scapegoat when it's not related. Take blame for what you're doing wrong and make moves to stop doing that. Yeah, because I watch your trailer where people are like blasting themselves in the air with a rocket launcher, and you can't even vault over a box in PUBG when it came out. Right. <laughs> so they they're not the reason you failed. All right, you're doing two separate things. Yeah. The only thing you have in common that you're both shooters. So calm down. Don't blame somebody else yep. for your mistakes. So true. 
And to be fair, Cliffy B did not say this. No, this was the Nexon guy. Is it Nexon? Nexcorp? What the fuck is it? Nexon. It's Nexon. Yeah, Nexon. Uh, speaking of feeling miserably, not giving up, Mad Cats is back. Welcome That's back, right. Mad Cats. They are now called Mad Cats Global Limited. Which it also, again, sounds like an evil corporation. <clears throat> yes. There's a lot of that going on. So does Mad Nexon. Cats Nexon. Global, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> Nexon PUBG Corp and Mad, Mad Cats, Cats Global, Global Limited. Limited. They could all share a street in whatever <laughs> shady-ass town they live in. The New uh, World Order right there. Yeah. <laughs> Mad Cats. The rebirth of the accessory maker, and I think this might be the second rebirth. Um, you only thought they were dead. Now they're based out of China. Long, uh, Hong, Hong Kong. Kong. Kowloon, they're based Hong out of Hong Kong. Kong. Yep. Uh, in a press release, uh, they say that they have uh, new ideas and a new attitude. Hopefully that attitude is not to make <laughs> shitty products. Because that wouldn't be a new idea. Uh, Mad Cats is, you know, and you guys defended them way more than I did. We did. Um, but for me, Mad Cats is always like, here, you use this controller, and I'll use the real one. Like, Mad Cats has always been that. Uh, <laughs> it does seem now, they're going to be at CES this year, and it does seem now that they are focused on uh, PC gaming. PC stuff. Um, and, and it seems like that's where they're going to at least jump back into this world. Yeah, I think the first thing that they're actually going to be releasing is a what's called a Rat Air wireless mouse, mm-hmm. and it includes a wireless activation gaming surface. So, which is essentially that is I didn't know the what that was, pass. so I had it's to research pass. that. <laughs> um, I was like, "What is that?" And it turns out it's a mouse pad that provides power to the mouse. It's like a charging uh, charging port slash mouse pad. They also announced the Strike 4 mechanical keyboard and Freak 4 headset, which is like a freak as in like frequency. Yes. Freck. Freak. That's what it looks like, but I think it's freak. It is freak. Stupid. You Stupid can't... name. <laughs> it is a dumb name. Stupid uh... name. So it's a wireless activation gaming surface. <laughs> it's... It's, it's a mouse pad, bro. It's a mouse pad with a charger in it, is what it, it is. is. It's called a mouse pad. So, from one death to another, oh, the Xbox One Connect dongle has now now died, which means basically the Connect is dead the again. The Connect is dead. Several several months, weeks, whatever it was back, we told you the Connect was dead. They're not making them anymore, but they kept making the dongle. Yes. Which lets you use the uh, Connect on the PC, uh, Xbox One S and One X. No more. Not anymore. It went to Dongle Heaven. <laughs> or Dongle Hell. I don't know how it lived its life. Dongle Heaven. And uh, you can no longer get them. So on the black market, I'm sure they're going to shoot up in price. Oh, yeah. They'll be super expensive now. Is the most disturbing part of this whole story is that my first thought is I better get one. Probably. You that know. was my very first thought when I read this. Do you like, even I need one? one? Uh-uh, because I've got original Xbox. Right. I was like, I ought to get one. Just in case I ever get an X or no, want to use well, it on the PC. Then go get one. I didn't check to see how much they're selling for. I bet it shot up whenever they announced this. Probably. I don't even know how much they were to start with. You probably have to get it in the dark web. Yeah, I'll have to log in the dark web. I'll go to dark, darkweb.com. And shoot over there. I don't even know how the fuck you get in dark web. I don't either. It's got something to do with hacking. Backslash, and, backslash dark web. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's a lot of yeah, a lot of HTML going on there. I think. Yeah. Once you get there, how do you get out? Ah, uh, I don't know. You, when Can you go you come in, back you through the same le- door you came out. Yeah, you got to leave a trail of breadcrumbs. Follow them back. Yeah, yeah. Any hackers out there listening? Yeah. Let us know how the dark web works in extensive detail, please. <laughs> Not too extensive, though. No, full on. Pull it. No, pull it. Pull a MacGyver and maybe leave one or two steps out, so that way do it doesn't about, get out to the whole public. But how do you feel about new MacGyver? I haven't watched it. I refuse. Okay. I kind of don't. I kind of refuse to watch it. It's fair enough. I'll October you, is when they killed off the Connect. Also, I found that that was October. Yeah, October last year, and now they've killed off the dongle. Back to MacGyver talk. Dongle heaven. MacGyver talk. That sounds like a new new fun podcast. Now Richard Dean Anderson is always going to be MacGyver. I can't 
I don't. I'm curious about the other one, but I don't. I'm afraid. Right. Now I've I've seen a couple episodes. And it's not old MacGyver. <laughs> Is it more action oriented and more buddy cop oriented? It's more CBS. Okay. And I don't mean that in a bad way. It's just not. It's like MacGyver, NCIS LA. Yeah. <laughs> or, or Phoenix it, or it's whatever. It's even got that. It's got that dude from CSI on it. Too. Right. Like it's very CBS. I believe America's, his. I believe his name is George Eads. Yeah, America's number one network. It's very CBS. <coughs> so let me give you an update. On MacGyver? No. No. On the adapter for Xbox One oh. S, One X, and Windows 10 PC. I'm waiting. $240 on Amazon. Holy shit. What is it on eBay? Um, now there's... A, there's no, nope, there's another one. $243. Let's check eBay. Let's just see. Let's get a hot scoop. I'm going to connect here. Connect. Like, you could tell people are on the hunt for this thing. I type in connect, and adapter is like the number one thing that pops up. Oh, okay. Here's one that looks sketchy as hell (laughs) for $58. It's under new other, though, for the manufacturer. Hmm. The OG Xbox one is $342 on there with 157 sold. Holy fuck. Here's one for two hundred and two dollars. One ninety eight. Here's one thirteen with bids. One thirty five with bids. I'm telling you the the panic's real. Yeah, it sounds like it. Yeah. Your best thing to do yeah. is to like cruise through a Best Buy and see if you can pick one up at retail. Yeah. See if you can't just find like an old dusty one that's been yeah. sitting on a shelf somewhere. Yeah. I, I scooped can- up my connect off of uh an auction site forever ago but I have the old Xbox One so she just plugs right in right connect adapter on Best (laughs) Buy Mm. they don't even list it anymore oh Best Buy put them all on eBay right they're not stupid they're Mm -hmm. the new other (laughs) right they don't want to come off as super sketchy so they're like new other Next story. Pokemon Go is finally heading to China. Everyone that thought it was dead's wrong because now uh, the country that has the most gamers is getting it. Is getting it. They're about to Pokemon Go real hard. Now, fun fact, I've all started playing Pokemon Go again. I didn't know that. Yeah, I started like a week and a half ago. Why? Because everyone else quit. I'm trying to keep it alive here in America. Okay. Uh, they added new Pokemon. Okay. And turns out the game's still kind of fun. Okay. I'm not. I'm not going to like spots like I was before. Yeah. It's not motivating me to be healthy, but my new job has me walking around a whole lot in different areas. So it just makes sense that now that I'm working, that I would just have it going in my pocket. Right. Racking up. You know. I get that mileage. Hatching eggs and whatnot. So, yeah. Been Pokemon going it up. And it's all right. Good on you, mate. Yeah. Been playing a lot of that. Still playing Animal Crossing on the phone, too. That's your mobile minute here at uh, Game Stitch. And, uh, Ryan's. We'll, we should have called that Ryan's Mobile Minute. Ryan's Mobile Minute. Uh, sponsored by Ryan's Mobile Minute. I like any segment sponsored by itself. Do you? I think Yeah, I think that's a good, strong move. You could so, do Ryan's Mobile Minute, sponsored by GameStitch.com. Yeah, that's too. That sounds like someone believed in it, though. Ryan's Mobile Minute, sponsored by Ryan's Mobile Minute. Brought to you by Ryan's Mobile Minute. Sounds like no one but that product believed in itself. Okay. And I like that, too. <laughs> I guess. And each week, it's just going to be Animal Crossing and whatever, or Pokemon and whatever. Because I'm not hard in the mobile game. I'm not either. I do have the Stranger Things game on my phone that I've not good? played yet. I haven't played it yet, oh. in all honesty. Is it an Endless Runner? No. <laughs> a match three tile game? No. I used to play the the Knack match three tile game for Knack one because it got you stuff inside the game. Right. I remember. I got like to get back to Knack two. 
Me too. What Fucking fuck? devastating. We couldn't play it together. Oh, I know. Everybody's golf. I got to get back to because I love it. Oh yeah, gotta me get, too. Got to get back to No Man's Sky. Just see what the fuck is happening over there. I got yeah. I got a bunch of shit. I got to get back to Assassin's Creed Syndicate. I have to get back to that. Yep, got to start that. Still never finish that. Oh, so much to do. So little time. The Nintendo Switch becomes the fastest... Wait, let's start over. The Nintendo Switch becomes the all-time fastest-selling console in the United States for 10 months. And really no surprise. I mean, it's pretty much been leading up to this. A record previously held by... The Wii. The Wii. So they broke their own record in 10 months, which covers a period from launch in March 2017 to the beginning of this month, which is uh, January, for those that don't have a calendar. Nintendo has sold 4.8 million Switch units in the U.S., figure top some mark previously set um, by the Wii, which sold 4 million units. So, whooped its ass. Yeah. It's, uh, this is pretty standard for Nintendo. Nintendo does this. When they, anytime they introduce a new, not anytime, most of the time, when they introduce a new system, they they balls out for the first year. Um, they're breaking records, usually set by Except themselves. Except for the Wii U. Except for the Wii it's U. It's usually every other generation, really. Yeah, that's where they dominate. They rebounded hard after the GameCube, then they failed with the Wii U, then they rebound hard after that. Yep. Uh, but, I, you know, I, I've... I've Said it from the very beginning. The Switch is an awesome system. I know. I need to get one. I know all my friends have one now. It helps. It, it really does. Like I didn't think everybody. Really, everybody got one. I know. Like even people I didn't think would get one got one. And so uh, Hoffit Show hasn't been on the PS4 much. Right. I and, need and I one. shot him a text, and I'm like, "Why are you not playing anymore?" And he's like, "I can't stop playing Switch." It's like, didn't expect that, but okay. Like everybody yeah. got one. It's kind of shocking. Not me. Not you. Holding strong. I'm holding strong for right now. I want one, but I got other shit going on, and yeah. um, my uh, my strategy didn't work. Right. Uh, you, you went with the the, the all, grade school strategy. Uh, but you're right. And but I was told to get new friends. Right, because you went with all my friends have all my. Why can't I have one? <laughs> Which is a unique strategy as an adult. <laughs> And it did not pay off. No. I guess you need new friends then. And what did, if they have switches? And she did pull the old, did they get an El Camino? Right. They didn't. <laughs> no, they did not. They got right, switches. I right. get it. Um, but, Nintendo uh, also shared a little more news. The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, Switch's biggest launch game, has an attach rate of over 55%. <coughs> That's right. One out of two of you. Who on a Switch, also on Breath of the Wild. No surprises for the first month. That was the only game worth getting. Now, here's the surprise, though. Mario Odyssey. 60%. Which just launched in October. Is that 60% attached? It launched in October. Mario. I mean. That dude. That guy. That guy's the shit. That dude, yeah. Yeah. And it's it's good. It's a good Mario game. Yeah. I haven't played it, but I've heard it's good. Breath of the Wild is good. Like it, it's more than just like they, they don't just shit these games out. Like they're good. Also, our friend Marshall two hundred seven said he's two hundred five. Two hundred five. So give him two. He doesn't deserve. <laughs> <laughs> I'll yank those two back. We'll, we'll knock them down to two hundred three. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. I'll allow it below, but I won't. I won't allow it above. Uh, he said it's blowing his face off. So, yeah. Uh, Even, uh, I think that thing is getting passed around his family pretty good, too. Like, I think his house is playing a lot of Switch. Really? Like, I think he can't even get his hands on it, is how much Switch is being played. Uh, He's a little, like, maybe there needs to be two Switches here, because I can't play it. (laughs) So. So, yeah, I do want one, but mm, it's not in the cards right now. Right. Garrett didn't get a Switch. Garrett did not. Thomas got one, Mm -hmm. had one. Gerald, I.A.K. Hoffman Show, Marshall, 205, 203, got one. Matt's had one. I've had one. Mm-hmm. So it's starting to, it's, it's getting starting there. to get out there. It yeah. is. 
it's getting out there. There's still no voice chat though, so we played Rocket League. Uh, me and Marshall yeah. played Rocket League, and we had to get on PS4 for chat. Yeah, I heard. Stupid, stupid. But it is what it is. Uh, also, Mario Kart Deluxe had uh, over fifty percent. Over fifty percent, two point four million. And Splatoon Two had over twenty percent with nine hundred and sixty thousand copies. <coughs> Success all the way around. Yep. And we're riding the su- success train. Let's keep a let's keep a chugging. Rocket League hit a new milestone. 40 million players. Good Lord. That's up from 33 million back in July and 38 million just two weeks ago. Damn. Rocket League is the nation of domination. Back in July, Sonics reported that it collectively logged 1.5 billion matches. Since it's launched in 2015, just five months since then, they've now played 500 million more to bring the total over 200 billion matches. B with a bill, 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 billion. Crazy. Bill, bill, bill. <laughs> I want people to understand. I'm not saying million. That's weak ass shit. Billion. Bill, bill, billion. A billion. <laughs> Crazy. Uh, yeah, Rocket League's killing it, man. Rocket League has. Is its own beast. It. Uh... Yeah. They said in a blog post, "We can't wait to tell you everything else we have planned in store for 2018," which well, tells us nothing. I guarantee you, what's not coming? Rocket what's League that? Two. <laughs> Rocket League Two is not coming. I'll tell you what's apparently also not coming is crossplay for PS4. No. Thanks, Sony. <laughs> yeah, it's all Sony's fault. I can play freaking Nintendo Switch and PC, or Nintendo Switch and Xbox One, or Switch on Switch. God forbid I want to play PS4 with someone who doesn't have a PS4. But you know what? I feel safe. Or change Thanks, your Sony. name. I feel real safe. Thanks for protecting me when I didn't need protecting. Or change your Change your PSN. Name. Yeah. So you got to be monkey donkey balls because you were 13 when you made it. I eat farts because you thought it was fun. <laughs> I, loved, I, loved some, I loved some of them though. Some of them are so <laughs> bad and those will probably go away when you can change it. But... <laughs> some of them are just so... Uh, Fucking awesome though, too. Like Django ate my baby. I, I, <laughs> he's still my favorite. I talk about him every week. I played one game with this guy of Rocket League in my life. L- and... Lou Sasshole was a good one too. <laughs> yes, he was good too. L O U Lou Sasshole. I forgot. About... That's a good name. I forgot about together. I forgot about Lou. Uh, I did. <laughs> I eat farts. That's a good one. I like that. I hadn't heard that one before. <laughs> <laughs> so you would lose some of the charm, but also some people need to change their name because, you know, they don't want to, you know, in public when someone's like, hey, what's your PSN? You're like, oh, I love big titties. <laughs> it's embarrassing to have to blast it out loud because you were 12 when you said it. Well, I'll tell you what. One thing I have noticed about PSN, and I don't know if I just never noticed it before, but uh, a lot of 420s out there for the – yeah. <laughs> for the PSN screen names. Yep. Lot- Quickscope 420, just blazing 420, yep. burn one 420. A lot of 420s out there. We played with a group of gentlemen the other night. And they were... Yeah, a group of 420 guys. Yeah. I don't think they ever partied up either. The last guy, though, the, what made it good is there was a 420, a 420, and the last guy was a 438. Yeah. Because <laughs> he smokes just a little harder than everybody else. Or at a, different, I appreciate or at a different time. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, uh, those are the two things we need, Sony. Crossplay. Oh, you ain't sorry. Jet. Crossplay and change your screen name. Get it done. Change your crossplay name, screen. <laughs> That's, right. That's it for news. News sponsored by Game Stitch. <laughs> news sponsored by news. It's sponsored by the news section. <laughs> Lou Sasshole. <laughs> That's a good, good name. I wouldn't change it even if I had the choice if that was my name. Uh, now it's time for my newest favorite oldest segment where we just repeat the same game each week and we can tell you why you should check it out. I am never living that shit down. <laughs> Fuck. So we reach back our gaming past. We tell you about something we love. We tell you why we love it. And hopefully you'll watch videos. If you can still find it, maybe you'll play it. Now I'm picking one that's new enough that you could play it. Win back. <laughs> it's right. It's win back. Uh, active cover system inspired some of the the games that you love today. 
<laughs> got a blue case with a guy on it. Um, it's so my pick is Fat Princess for the PlayStation Ooh, Three. Yeah, developed by Titan Studios, obviously published <coughs> by Sony, and it came out in two thousand nine, July thirtieth, uh, two thousand nine in Japan. It came out December twenty fifth, and I'm not talking uh, fistful of cake. I'm not talking Fat Princess Adventures. I'm talking OG Fat Princess. OG Fat Fat Princess, which was uh, a lot, a lot of fun, and multiplayer up to 32 players. Basic goal of rescuing the princess and bringing her back to your team's base. So a capture the flag type situation, but it was very self aware. Of and how, yeah, you feed the princess to make her bigger, to make her harder to carry. Like it was just fun. It was silly and goofy. We had and a the style was good. We had a lot of fun with it. We laughed and we cried and we. It was good. Uh, six character classes: villager, worker, priest, ranger, mage, and warrior. Three downloadable co- classes: pirate, ninja, and giant. But the game was awesome. And I wish instead of Fat Princess Adventures, they would have went back to this. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm due for a new Fat Princess. Like a legit OG fat a real, princess, the, yeah, the old school stuff, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm due for one, and we would play it a lot because that game is uh, kind of thinkless fun. But yeah, yeah, that fat game princess. Was, that was I remember and, when I first got my PS3. That was one of the first games I got for it that we. It was probably, I think that's the first game that we, we ever played together. together. Could be, and because of its whimsical, cartoony art style, the game holds up. Yeah. So if you're still having a PS3 or if you watch a video, like that game still looks good. Fun game. Fat Princess. Check it out. Fat Princess. If you have a Gone But Not Forgotten for us, make sure you let us know on Twitter at game underscore stitch using the hashtag GBNF or podcast at gamestitch.com hashtag or subject line GBNF so that we can shout it out on here. Yeah. Speaking of, I'm going to go ahead and slip in uh, Garrett's shout out this week. Uh, shout outs. On the gone but not forgotten, um, because I think this fits. But last week we talked a little bit about the free Xbox games with gold and the PlayStation free PSN games with PlayStation Plus. Well, uh, our good friend Garrett Wade tweeted at us. He said, hashtag Army of Two is a guilty pleasure of mine. My buddy at LucasFan7 isn't a gamer, and he and I played that game to death when it came out. I am pumped at Xbox is releasing it for free. Uh, so that's on January's Games with Gold for Xbox. Right. Is, uh, on the stellar Army lineup of, that Xbox has. Is from Army of Two. Uh, apparently it's it's more stellar than we thought because Garrett's pumped. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. I'm, I'm happy for you, Garrett, but that's a shit lineup and you know it. <laughs> uh, if you want to shout out, just like Garrett had and just like Thomas is about to have, head over patreon.com support us at the $10 tier over there and you can shout out whatever you want every week and if you don't we'll give you a shout out or you can just sit on the sofa in your house and shout out if you want yeah for it's free not, but we won't hear it we won't hear it but uh it is what it is I guess I guess I guess it depends on how bad you want to shout out shout it out what are you doing Ryan shout are you, it out right now are you did you go into a coma no, I mean, I thought you did the shout-out sections. I didn't know you needed me. You afraid oh. you're going to do the same one? I th- yes. It is the same one, actually. <laughs> it is. This one's on purpose, though. So we told Thomas that we would run this shout-out for uh, a few weeks for him uh, to bring awareness. And uh, this will be week three, so we'll probably uh, see if he wants to change it out. But one more time. And again, link is in the show notes. You want me to? Am I? Am I reading it? I didn't know I was reading it. Yeah, you're up. I'm up. Bada bada bada. Swing bada. Uh, Thomas's shout out this week is Illyria PVE is a 50 slot server and has slightly boosted rates to cut out grinding, yet is balanced for a challenge. We aim to create a friendly community focused on interacting with each other and just playing the game to an ends rather than pure rage-inducing PvP. Anyone who joins can spawn in at Vikings Bay to find the community village area where you can collect your starter tools, tame, and armor from the community center. There are also rooms at the community center that allow for a safe place to log out or store your items until you've leveled up and can head out to make your way 
in the unforgiving land that is Ragnarok. We also have another clustered server that is dedicated to the new DLC, Aberration. This server will have the same stats as Ragnarok, including the community center and other goodies to help you explore the new map. Both are clustered together, allowing you to seamlessly travel between the two with no lost dinos or items or tribe issues. Uh, and in case we weren't aware, he is talking about a server on Ark Survival Evolved for the Xbox. Yeah, we probably should have said that up front. Probably should have. Uh, hey, you, you know what happens when you put me in charge of shit. I just keep uh, repeating it. Just like a broken record. <laughs> it is for Ark Evolution Evolved. Is that what it's called? It's Survival Evolved. Survival Evolved. New DLC, Evolution Evolved for Ark. Um, I decided. I haven't ran it by the guys that make it, but I think we're pretty set on that name. Uh, survival Evolved. Ark. Uh, Xbox One, he's got his own server. You're an asshole if you're playing it and not playing on his server. Because uh, it's... His server is like the uh, Planet Fitness of, of Ark servers. Like no, no assholes allowed. Yeah, no assholes allowed. Yeah, Planet. There's just, I don't even know anything about Planet Fitness. There's, they have like no. a like a goon button where you can go like hit a button like on a wall or something if somebody's being a dickhead. Really? Like he's over there like grunting while he's like cleaning and jerking. Ooh. Yeah, Ooh. and he's just watching his muscles. Like they don't. That's not what Planet Fitness is about. Like people with dad bods on the treadmill. That's what they want? Yeah, they don't want lurks or whatever they call their big meatheads. <laughs> lurks? Yeah, they call them something like that. Yes. What does that even mean? I don't know. Maybe that's not what they're calling, but they're, they're, there's like a meathead, like anti-meathead policy. <laughs> I, I'm still <laughs> stuck on lurks. That Hold doesn't on, even me, make sense. Let me go to Planet Fitness and see what it calls. They have a name for it. Hold on, let me go to Planet, Planet Fitness. <laughs> Like, no goons. <laughs> but it doesn't call them that because nobody wants to be a goon. <laughs> no. <laughs> you want to be someone to come to you and be like, hey, you're a goon, get out. <laughs> well, you don't want someone to come up to you and go, hey, you're a lurk, <laughs> get out either. Uh, or do you? <laughs> no. <laughs> Judgment free zone, but they got a name for the douchebags. <laughs> Lurks. Oh, that's awesome. I think that's what they're called. That sounds like the worst, the enemy in the worst maybe dungeon lunk. crawler ever. Maybe it's a lunk. A lunk? Yeah, like a, a, like lunk. a lunk head? Yeah, like, I think it may be a lunk free zone. Lurk sounds better. Because <laughs> <laughs> lurk sounds like when you kill it, you pop a chest. <laughs> lurk doesn't make any sense in the context, <laughs> though. Uh <laughs> Let me try. <laughs> I can't find it. I know it's hard to believe <laughs> since I made it up, but Planet Fitness. I'm still confused as how the fuck you know anything about Planet yeah, Fitness. Planet I know Split. you've never been in one. They have a, a lunk alarm. <laughs> lunk heads. A lunk alarm. <laughs> yeah. How do you know all this? Planet Fitness is a 110 decibel. Deafening tornado siren <laughs> is set off when weights drop or someone uh, tattles on another member for using a cell phone in the gym area or for being like a general douchebag. How do you know all this? It's you, do not, commercials. You, you do not frequent gyms. The commercials say like a lunk free zone or lurk free oh, zone. It's not <laughs> anti lurking policy. <laughs> that they probably do have. <laughs> probably goes back to the cell phone thing. Probably means something different. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like our trench coats allowed in the gym. Uh, follow us on the social medias. I am at podcast. Ryan Dan is at shirtless Dan. Together we are at game underscore stitch. And YouTube. You got to go to YouTube. You got to go to the follow. <coughs> and you got to click the little bell for notifications. That's how you know when we go live. We don't even know when we're going to go. So if you don't, then how? I mean, if we don't, how are you supposed to know? No, but, but I got to admit that uh, Ryan and I... I'm pretty proud of us because we are pretty consistently streaming. Like, mm -hmm. this is the only thing we've ever consistently done right for any right. amount of time. Yeah, for those familiar, we only promise you one stream a month, and we're, we're consistently cranking out at least four. At least four. That's one per week for those that are good at math. 
Actually, sometimes. to be fair, it's one per week for those that aren't good at math, too. Well, sometimes, <laughs> though, their month has five weeks in it, and that we're not necessarily doing. It never has five full weeks. No, it doesn't. That's true, but it's it like depends four and a half. Going. Yeah, but it's it's it depends on if you're counting by full weeks or if you're dividing the month into weeks. See, there's a right. difference. Right. Anyway, the key is that we're really good at what we do. Yeah. And you guys owe us a big thank you for how consistent we've been. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was going with. That's that's yeah, what I don't meant. worry. I'll, don't worry. I'll finish off your thought. We've been doing this long enough. I know where you're going with it. You tell me fucking uh, thank you, damn it. <laughs> right. You guys are in debt to us for how well we've done with this. Uh, in all seriousness, this used to be a paid tier over on Patreon, and we don't like you guys having to pay for content. Yeah. So we took that away, and we promised one per month, and we have exceeded that. Uh, we're going to keep it at one. Because we like the bar real low, but we're going to always probably do more than one. Because we do like to beat our goals. So, right. Um, when you we know, do people t- are like, set your goals high. Right. No, fuck that. Right. When we when we, we do two, them, it's it's above and beyond. We set them ground level so that we demolish that goal. Exactly. We break that goal. Exactly. Yeah. So. We do keep the bar pretty low. It's kind of like making your only goal for the following day to wake up. and Yeah. You're like, ah. Winner, cool, winner, I, right. <laughs> yeah. I nailed today. <laughs> Yeah, that's kind of what we do with our stream. So uh, keep your eyes peeled there. But seriously, if you subscribe to us and then hit the notifications bell, you'll know every time we do. And we also try to tweet it out right before we go live. Yes, that's so, true. Again, I've got a Gang Beast kind of playthrough. I've got uh, I Expect You to Die and Dan Has the Long Dark. Check those out. Check them out. YouTube.com forward slash Game Stitch. Thanks for being pals. Thanks for being swell and listening each week. Thanks for not being lunks. Lurks. Thanks or for not lurks. being lurks. Thanks for not being a lurk. And uh, I know we just gave shout outs to them, but we've got all of our patrons over at patreon.com forward slash game stitch. Thank you. You don't have to do that. And it means the world to us that you do. And it also lets us do some of the upcoming things that we plan to do. Yes. True. Like you were in deep okay. thought right then. I feel like I smell peanut butter. I'm trying to figure out what's going on. You either smell peanut butter or you're mid-stroke. <laughs> By stroke, I mean like a stroke, stroke. Not like a real stroke, right? I not understand. You're jaying off of peanut butter. <laughs> That's not what anyone does. Hopefully, if you do, stop. Weird. I'm sure somebody does. Somebody's got that uh, ruining crunchy. perfectly good peanut butter. Not that crunchy stuff. No, <laughs> no, that's doing it wrong. Oh man, you got to jay off of crunchy. Extra I w- crunchy. I wouldn't recommend fluff either. What about marshmallow fluff? No. Is that the fluff you're talking sticky. about? <laughs> yeah, it's what about too Nutella? sticky. The hazelnut spread. Well, it's better than the fluff. That's a little more like peanut butter. I'll tell you what else you don't use is you don't use that uh that that goober grape stuff that's that's peanut butter and jelly. Don't do Fuck that, that either. Fuck that stuff anyways. Huh? Fuck that stuff anyways. <laughs> I'll I'll take them in two jars, please. Don't combine them. Why don't you shove some soggy bread down in there, too, and I'll just eat it out of the jar like a real fat ass. <laughs> don't combine them. Smuckers, you son of a bitch. Is that who does it? Uh, I think so. Yeah, you son of a bitch. It's either Smuckers or Welch's, but I think it's Smuckers. Yeah, they're both the same assholes. I don't know anybody else who makes jelly. Does he like <laughs> so. I got the jelly market cornered. <laughs> Those are the, that's all I got. Yeah, <laughs> the jelly times. All right, that's been episode 260 of the official Game Stitch podcast. I felt like I was going to say something else, but I didn't have anything else loaded. I saw. Yeah, yeah. And I so, heard. So good night. Good night.